Industry Insider coming to you from Cafe Republic in South Yarra. Uh, we're here with uh, Annie Van, John Course, joining me. How are you, gentlemen? We're good. We're probably better than you, given you just flew back from the other side of the world. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, you guys are the superstars here. I've, I've just gone for a holiday. Uh, but man, it's hot. And it's not just the heater in here that... Uh, no, it is. Uh, Andy so graciously found out about before All those started. people out there that say that Melbourne doesn't have good weather in winter, look out the window. It's uh, It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Now, we're across the road from uh, Vicious Headquarters, aren't we? Yes. Has it always been there? No, we started off, uh, we've had, how many offices since we started? One, two, three. Five. Yeah, five since we started. So we started actually in a back shed down in um, a suburb called Frankston, which is about an hour out of Melbourne. And we both lived down there. So we just found somewhere that we could get really El Cheapo and... We started a little studio and started working on stuff and, and just built it from there. And then we moved to another office in Frankston and a couple of other offices in South Yarra and Richmond. And now where we are, we've been for about three years. Mm. Take us back to the... Uh, just took it there. Sorry. Take us back to... Oh, it's all right. We've got, uh, it's always good service. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the, the original place that you started out, tell us a little bit more about that. Is it Was it literally a shed? Well, basically... There was a church that my family went to, yeah. and I spoke to the priest, and I said, do you have anywhere where we can, you know, basically start making music and, and hacking around? And he said, well, we've got an old garage, and uh, you guys can have a look at that. And yeah. we look, had a look inside, and literally, it was an old garage. There was yeah. nothing in it. Walls were all cracked and broken, so we built a little studio in there, and he literally gave it to us for five bucks a week. And that's how we. That's not that's bad. We, that's right. The, the, the rent was was reasonable. We could handle that. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we started, you know, developing one music out of that studio. Yeah. Uh, well, let's call it garage come studio. And then we thought, let's cut the already small room in half and have the studio on one side and the record label on another side. Yeah. And uh, we sort of started a label and started releasing the music that we were making in the other half. Um, and that's how Vicious was born. And by coincidence, very, very early days, there was a, a DJ called Carl Cox, yeah. um, who happened to be touring Australia. And uh, John basically suggested to the promoter that was bringing him out, let's make a track. So, yeah. yeah, so that was the first, that was one of the first tracks we did on the label. And the promoter was Mark, um, Mark James, who started Future. Future yeah. And um, he basically had Carl touring and he wanted to make a track with him. So we said, we'll come down to the studio to make it down there we released the record um, for Australia yeah we put it out on vinyl and then we had a uh, Carl got a distribution for it in the UK and that was I think the third release on the label so wow. I mean all of the early releases were all just us networking and talking to people who were basically we crossed paths with and said they were like oh do you want to you know I've got this tune do you like it and we're like yeah cool let's put it out you know I mean we didn't really know what running a label exactly meant we just we just hacked. Just tried it. Yeah, yeah try let's it just out. do it, you know. I mean, obviously you learn a lot along the way and we have a lot more knowledge now, but at the time we were just enthusiastic guys, really into music. We had another business partner at the time, Colin Daniels, who formed the label with us. And myself and Andy were more on the creative side with A&R and the music that we released and making stuff, and, and Cole was more on the business side. So it kind of worked really good. 